Call of Duty 2024 Black Ops Gulf Wars reveal is imminent, Treyarch's big comeback with a full four years of development on this game, unheard of for any previous Call of Duty. We heard from The Verge that apparently at Xbox's game showcase, which is going to be taking place on Sunday, June 9th, Treyarch will be unveiling details on this upcoming game, with the campaign reportedly being developed by Raven Software, similar to Black Ops Cold War. Following on from this, Insider Gaming said that the actual reveal for the game is going to be happening ahead of the Xbox game showcase showcase in early June, but if the game showcase is going to be on the 9th, it probably means that there's a big chance it could actually happen at the end of May, or maybe on the very same week that the Xbox game showcase takes place. However, regardless of when the exact reveal is going to be, it's going to be around the end of May slash the beginning of June, and leading up to that will likely be a bunch of teasers towards the reveal, similar to what we've gotten with past games. Now, according to Inside Gaming, it's going to be a traditional reveal and will not be a live event inside of Warzone, like we've had in previous years. However, I do think that there will be teasers leading up to the Gulf War reveal inside of Warzone, but the reveal itself won't be inside of that mode, because for example, in Season 2, Bunker 5 opened up on Urzikstan, which featured a load of zombies canisters being experimented on, and that likely has something to do with Gulf War zombies. And with Season 3, you can no longer access that bunker, and we know in Season 3 Reloaded, all of the bunkers on Urzikstan are going to be opening up, and most likely those bunkers once again will be tying into the reveal for Gulf War. So like I said, whilst I don't think the reveal itself will be taking place in the mode, I think that there will be teasers and build up and hype to it. And Trek always do the most cryptic and hype teasers leading up to their game releases. So I'm so excited for their marketing plans, especially because they've had so much time to plan for the reveal with such a long development span. According to Insider Gaming, Xbox are apparently planning to gear up to announce old Call of Duty games coming to the Xbox Game Pass during the June Games Showcase, but it's not clear as to which games will be included just yet. So likely at the Xbox Game Showcase, we'll learn more details about Black Ops Gulf War, but we'll also get reveals of old CODs coming to the Game Pass, which will probably likely include, for example, Black Ops 1, World at War, the original Modern Warfares. So yeah, literally next month, we're likely going to get teasers for Black Ops Gulf War, and Vondi over on Twitter has provided some very nice predictions for the Gulf War marketing, and honestly, I think these are really accurate, and probably are quite close to actuality. So he's predicting the announcement to be around mid-May, and that's probably in line. We may even start to get some teasers at the beginning of May, then we'll get the full-on World War reveal in late May, the end of the week. We'll probably then get a campaign reveal at the game's showcase from Xbox on June 9th, which might feature one full mission of campaign gameplay. Then we'll get a multiplayer reveal in early August, a zombies reveal in mid-August, or maybe a bit later, with the multiplayer beta being in early September. Now, we know that apparently, according to rumors, Activision slash Microsoft want to do a zombies early access for the game as well, so we might get campaign early access late September with the Zombies Early Access in early October with then the full launch in October 25th. Now, you may be saying this way too early. No way we're going to be getting it in September. However, with the game releasing earlier than usual October 25th, it is possible. According to Inside Gaming's reports, they want to do a few weeks of early access, which is more than we've gotten in previous years. And this makes sense when you consider that it might be going to the Xbox Game Pass. That could be an incentive for people to still buy the full game because you might not get access until release it with the Xbox Game Pass. But if you want to play it very early, you will then have to buy the full game. But late September is quite early, so maybe you might just get access to the full game early in early October if that's what they decide to go with as a pre-order bonus. And yes, Insider Gaming are reporting that the multiplayer reveal is probably in August with the Zombies reveal after, maybe early September. So whilst those predictions may be slightly off, they're probably quite in line. I really, really hope this game is good. Trek need to have this big comeback, especially for Zombies after the last two disasters, and they've fully stepped off of Modern Warfare Zombies now to just focus on this game. If Zombies is not good enough for this game, I think a lot of people are going to dip out after the last couple games. This really is the last chance, but the last two games weren't really proper experiences, unfortunately, and were way below Trek's standard because they were kind of rushed projects that they probably didn't even want to do in the first place, or at least they didn't get the adequate support to fully support the games. Now, unrelated to this, but regarding Call of Duty Vanguard, there's been a rumor recently that the game has actually sold 30 million copies, which seems absolutely absurd considering the fact that we know that physical sales dipped to the lowest in over 10 years and Activision said that the game massively underperformed in sales. And if we look in the online community, engagement surrounding the game seemed extremely low. I have been making Call of Duty videos now for an extremely long time, since like 2014. I've been engaged in the community, viewing people's viewership and stuff like that for so many years. I've never seen it as low as Vanguard. And I understand that this is anecdotal data, but even if you look on Google Trends, 
and other different verifiable measures for engagement, you can see it's ranked way below all of the recent Call of Duties. Now, where we've gotten this 30 million sales number from is from an ex-contract worker for Activision who no longer works for the company, and he apparently said as such on his LinkedIn. So, personally, I just don't think that this is reliable data to go off of. It's not an official press statement. It's literally just an ex-employee mentioning it on their LinkedIn randomly. And to be honest, I doubt they give the sales numbers to many employees because it's probably something they hold very secretive since for some reason they want to just keep it locked and sealed. I guess in their mind, it's better for shareholders for them to just be ambiguous with their sales numbers and they just release, of course, their revenue reports, which they are legally obligated to do. And this is the really annoying thing is that Activision keep all of their sales numbers and data a secret now. Back in the day, we of course had a live play account and they removed it. And that's because they always want to be in control of the narrative. Even though these recent Call of Duties have been selling better than ever before, their revenue data is up massively, they still want to hide as much information as possible. I guess they feel it's in their best interest because then they control the narrative. They can also manipulate or misrepresent data. For example, this 30 million number for Vanguard could potentially be including all of the downloads for the game, which may include if you played it on a free-to-play weekend, or maybe it includes the amount of accounts that have played it, which people, of course, game share. There's so many different things that could explain where this number has come from, and maybe they're not all physical and digital sales. Also, Vanguard was on sale a lot of the time for like $10 for a big portion of the year. However, they do do massive sales for all of the Call of Duties. I don't think that's the only explanation, and not many people pick up the physical games anyways for that sale to be a big thing. In my opinion, I just don't think this is accurate. Many people have been saying that after Modern Warfare 2019, Call of Duty's player base has just blown up, so that could explain as to why Vanguard managed to sell 30 million copies, but still be considered an underperformance for them, because maybe all Call of Duties now, ever since Modern Warfare 2019 and Warzone took off, are just selling ridiculously higher than any of the previous Call of Duties. However, according to the information that has been revealed, this doesn't seem in line with anything we have heard of. Now, unfortunately, we only have the public sales numbers for the Call of Duties before Modern Warfare 2019. They have not released exact figures since, and a few years ago, Black Ops 1 actually overtook Modern Warfare 3, which was previously the most sold Call of Duty ever. Both Black Ops and Modern Warfare 3 have sold over 30 million copies, with Black Ops 2 edging slightly behind. Now, it's interesting because these sales numbers have changed a lot over time. Since these games are obviously still selling residual copies, and Ghost sold so high, probably off of the back of Modern Warfare 3's hype, being the most sold COD game at the time, and this was Infinity Ward's first Call of Duty, the first next-gen console game as well. But to think that Vanguard may have outsold all of these games is just really ridiculous to me, because I do think that it has sold pretty well. However, I think probably only around 25 million, and once again, I think that's because the gaming industry has blown up massively, so whilst Vanguard was definitely nowhere near as good as, you know, a lot of the past games like Black Ops 1 and the original Modern Warfares and pretty much any other game on this list, I think it did manage to sell better than a lot of them just purely because the industry has blown up since then. Call of Duty has blown up as well, being integrated with Warzone, that's brought in a load of free-to-play players that are probably now playing the main games too. And overall, the gaming industry has blown up, adding a couple extra billion players. But at the same time, whilst the gaming industry has increased a lot more, a lot more people are playing games now, there's also way more games on the market, there's a lot more competition, so whilst yes, there's way more people playing games in general, that's spread out across way more different games than it used to be. So whilst COD is always going to be the top dog, that's still something to consider. But this is why I don't believe these numbers, because Activision released that Modern Warfare 2019 hit 30 million copies sold and became the most sold Call of Duty ever. Now, of course, they released this information in 2020, so it's been four years since then, so it would have gotten residual sales. So it's probably gotten only around a few million since then, maybe five million at best. We also know that Black Ops Cold War sold extremely well, so I reckon it probably similarly overtook the 30 million mark. Also, when Modern Warfare 2 was released, they announced that it was the fastest selling Call of Duty ever. Now, this doesn't mean the most selling Call of Duty ever. It just means that its sales at the launch of the game were generated a lot quicker than ever before. And that's obvious because even though Modern Warfare 2 wasn't well received and apparently the player base dropped off massively post-launch, because of the hype of Modern Warfare 2019, it was a much anticipated game. So, so many people just immediately bought it just off of that game. But whilst Modern Warfare 2 sold a lot quicker on launch, I don't think it ever became the most sold Call of Duty ever. I think Modern Warfare 2019 still holds that title because if Modern Warfare 2 did overtake Modern Warfare 2019 in the long run, Activision would have announced it, but they never have. They just said it was the fastest selling and they didn't give any specific numbers. They didn't say it overtook 30 million or anything like that. So we know Modern Warfare 2019 overtook 30 million sales. We don't have a precise number, but it's probably anywhere between 33 to 35 million-ish. Modern Warfare 
2 is probably trailing behind around the 30 million mark, with Black Ops Cold War probably being around the similar stance. Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare 2019, of course, both were boosted massively in sales due to them being around during a pandemic, of course. And then for them to say that Vanguard massively underperformed in sales, it can't have sold over 30 million copies because it would imply that there must be, you know, a massive gap between Modern Warfare 2019 and the other game's sales and Vanguard, which would probably be a gap of around 10 million that old Call of Duties used to have those gaps. So I think most likely, Modern Warfare 2019, like I said, probably around 35 million. Probably with the residual sales, Black Ops Cold War and Modern Warfare 2 are probably around 33 million. And then I think Vanguard is probably around, you know, at 8 to 10 million below them, because otherwise they wouldn't have stressed so much about it underperforming. Because the only way that Vanguard could have sold over 30 million copies and still be considered a low point for Call of Duty by Activision in terms of the modern sense is that the modern Call of Duties are just selling so much better now than they ever have before, which would mean that Modern Warfare 2019 and these other games, Modern Warfare 2 and Cold War, would have hit around the 40 million mark, especially Modern Warfare 2019 since it's been out the longest. However, I just highly doubt it's hit the 40 million mark because they would have announced it and they wouldn't have said it underperformed so much. So that's why I just don't believe this data at all. And like I said, it's not really a reliable source of information anyways, just from a random ex-employee's LinkedIn. So I would take this with a massive grain of salt. It just seems completely incomprehensible. Like I said, I think it sold really well, but probably only around 25 mil. Well, with there then being a 10 million gap between Modern Warfare 2019 and Vanguard, explaining why in their eyes it underperformed, even though if we look at all Call of Duties, it did well. It's only because new CODs sell so much better now, since there's so many new players in the franchise. Anyways, that's all I wanted to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for watching the video. Make sure to subscribe if you're not here for latest and greatest Call of Duty news information. So anyways, thank you for watching and uh, bye.